Hi everyone, this is Matt Touchot with Intro Stats, and today we're continuing our discussion about correlation and regression. So last time we looked at some of the famous uh, statistics that we calculate in correlation and, and regression, including the, the, the correlation coefficient, R squared, the coefficient of determination, slope, y-intercept, and the regression line. We kind of saw how those were calculated and how what they mean, how to explain them. But today we're going to get into a little further into this idea of residuals. So residuals are a big part of regression analysis. So uh, if you kind of want to know how good your formula is for predicting things, then we're going to have to get into this topic of residuals. Now we talked about how residuals are the vertical distance that each point is from the regression line. So if we measure how far vertically every single dot is above or below the regression line, that's called a residual. So, uh, and what we found also is that if we sort of average those residuals, we get something called the standard deviation of the residual errors, which tells us the average distance that the points in the scatter plot are from the regression line, and it also gives us the average prediction error. So let's look a little bit at the same example we picked up on last time. Uh, our x value was the temperature, a uh, high temperature of the day, and then we looked at how much profits uh, a store that sw sells swimsuits made that day. So looking at swimsuit profits versus temperature. Temperature was the x, and swimsuit dollars profit was the y. So when you're calculating the residual, what the computer does is, the computers, by the way, all do this. So I'm showing you, you know, all the calculations, but really the computers do this in a split second. But really what you're going to do is you're, you need to figure out what the y value is on the line, right? That's called the predicted y value, or y hat. So to do that, I'm going to basically plug in each of my x values into the regression line formula. So this is the formula of this line. If I replace the letter x with the number that x was equal to, I can find the, the y value on the line for that x. We call that the predicted y value. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is my, my regression line was 26.4 plus 18.06x. Remember from last time? Uh, 26.4 was the y-intercept, and 18.06 was the slope. Last time I showed you how, to, how those were calculated. So now what I'm doing is I'm re plugging in the x value, 17, into that formula. I'm replacing the x with 17, and I'm working it out. And I get a predicted y value of 338.42. So my actual y value was 378. My predicted y value was 333.42. To get the residual, I subtract the actual y value minus the predicted. And that's going to give me the vertical distance. That's what this is doing. Just a fancy way of figuring out what's the vertical distance. So um, 378 minus 333.42 gives me a residual of positive 44.58. In other words, that point uh, is 44.58. Uh, dollars above the line. It would all be the same units as the y. So this I think is this point right there is 44 above the line. Okay? That's kind of the idea. Now we're going to do this for all the x values. So the next x value was 19. I'm plugging that into for x in the regression line formula. I, I multiply this out and then add the 26.4. I get 369.54. If I subtract these two, I get negative 8.54. The negative residual member tells you that the point is below the line. So that point was actually 8.54 below the line. Okay? Now if we go to the next one, 20. 20 was our, uh, 20 was our uh, x value. We're going to plug that in for x into the formula. And that gives us a predicted y value of 387.6. Again, my actual y value was 399. So if I subtract those y values, I'll get the vertical distance. So 399 minus 387.6 gives us a positive 11.4. So that point was 11.4 above the line. Negative residuals mean the point was below the line. 
Positive residuals mean it was above the line. And you can kind of keep just doing this for all the points. You can kind of see how I just plugged them in. And I got my residuals. See how the residuals are positive and negative numbers? You get some positive and some negative. Points that are below the line, you'll have a negative residual. Points above the line will have a positive residual. Now, um, there's a couple famous graphs that come from these residuals uh, that people look at. Actually, there's quite a few graphs out there, but two main ones um, are the residual plot versus the x val uh, variable. So what they do is they put the x-axis, just like the x-axis of the original scatter plot, but the y is no longer um, the actual y value. It's actually the residual is the y. So what you kind of see is, um, usually in a residual plot versus the x variable, you'll see the x-axis right here. So this is the x-axis. This one right here, that's the x-axis. But these now, the y variables are actually the residual. So this is the residual right here. These are the residuals. So you can see positive residuals right here. Positive 10, 20, 30, 40, negative residuals. Negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40. Okay? So that, that's what the, so the residuals. So if you kind of look at this, basically 17 had a residual of positive 44. So at 17, they put a dot up at positive 44. So it kind of shows you how, what the vertical distance is of each one of these points. You see how in this graph, the scatter plot, the points are so tiny, it's really hard for me to judge how far, right, the points are. I kind of like to think of a residual plot as a magnifying glass in some ways. If you have kind of bad eyes like me, this kind of helps me see the vertical distances much better. So think of the, if the residual was zero, this is like representing the line itself. So if you, were, if you had a residual of zero, your point would be exactly on the line. So this is like the line, and these are the points, and how far vertically they are above or below the line. So at 19, we had a residual of negative 8.54. So you can see at, at 19, I got a point at negative 8 right there. And so on. 20 had a residual of positive 11, so I got a point at positive 11. Uh, and so on. At um, 23, I had a residual of negative 56, so 23 at negative 56 there, right? So we got a negative 56. And then, um, and so on. At 27, we had a residual of, um, so we had a residual of, uh, so 20, I'm sorry, 27, we had a residual of uh, 29.98 so that would be right here 29.98 is right above and then um, at 28 we had a residual of um, negative 5 so here's negative 5 so you can kind of see this is called a residual plot Now, one of the things we like to look for in residual plots is um, if the uh, sorry my little toy poodle is coming in to say hi to me. So my little, uh, my, uh, so in, in a residual plot, what we want to do is um, uh, we want to kind of look at uh, and see if, um, if it's evenly spread out. That's one of the things we look for in a residual plot is to see if it's evenly spread out or there's some areas of the graph where all the points are very close and then other areas where the graph where the points are very far away. That, that can be problematic. So this is also why we study residuals. Uh, another graph you'll see occasionally is they'll make a histogram of these residuals. So they'll actually make a histogram uh, counting how many, how many numbers were in e every, each section. So you'll kind of see again with the residual histogram of the residuals, you'll see these negative positive numbers and you'll see zero. So this is a histogram of, of these residuals right here. Um, so you can kind of see what it looks like. One of the two things we like to look at with this histogram of the residuals, uh, we like to know if the, the, the highest bar is pretty close to zero or is it kind of far away. Um, sometimes in, uh, you can kind of see here the zero is not really where the highest bar is. 
So that's kind of can be problematic. Also, um, we like it to be relatively normal, bell-shaped. Um, so again, this is actually not, this looks a little skewed left. So again, this is not a very good looking histogram of the residuals, but this is the idea of it. So those are a couple famous graphs that go with residuals. Now, what about the standard deviation of residual errors, right? How do we calculate that? Well, it's sort of like the average of the residuals. That's kind of how you do it. And, and it is a standard deviation calculation. So if you guys remember when we talked about standard deviation, we're, we're saying it's the, uh, it's the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom, and then they take the square root of it at the end. So what this is going to do now is going to look at the um, sum of squares, so y minus y hat, and then divided by the degrees of freedom, n minus 2. Okay, um, and then we got, um, so this is the formula for it, so it's y minus y hat, that's the residual, square it and add up all the squares. So I'm going to square all these numbers, which I did right here, and add them up. And that's where we get this 8487.03. And we're dividing that uh, by 6. Um, and, um, and then, uh, again, we're going to go ahead and divide those two. Uh, now, the, the sample size, notice it says n minus 2. The degrees of freedom for one data set was n minus 1, but two data sets is n minus 2, right? Remember, these are ordered pairs, but there are two of them. So, again, that's... And we get, we get a one, there's going to be one fixed value in this data set and one fixed value in this data set. So we, we say n minus 2. So 8 minus 2 would be 6. That's going to be our degrees of freedom. And then divide them and take the square root. And we get this, the standard deviation of the residual errors is about 37.61. Remember, it's always going to have the same units as the, um, as the dollar amount, as the uh, y value. So this will be dollars again. So if you were making a prediction, um, suppose you, the company wanted to predict what their profits might be based on temperature. Okay, well one thing you have to kind of keep in mind is that all formulas in science are, you have to think about when is